Welcome to today's presentation. My name is Dr. Stuart Norling, and today I'm going to talk about how use of unique injection modes on the Okta SF3 SPR system can help users accelerate drug discovery and development. Today's presentation will cover an overview to drug discovery market and a brief introduction to the Okta SF3 SPR system. Next, we'll see how the solutions of today can answer current questions in drug discovery and development, and then look at a novel injection format called OneStep that can help you answer the questions of the future and make better decisions in a shorter period of time with less sample requirements. Finally, we'll look at another novel injection type called NextStep, which allows the setup of simplified competition assays, meaning you can get critical binding site data for your drug molecules easily. So why do we need improved methods for helping drug discovery and development? Drug development using protein-based therapeutics has become particularly important in medical research and is predicated on the identification of therapeutic targets. The drug development process is generally a long and costly process, and only a very small percentage of drug candidates under development make it through to approval by the regulatory bodies. Determination of accurate kinetics and affinity, along with other critical quality attributes, plays an ever-increasing important role in identifying and isolating therapeutic molecules to drug targets. It is therefore important that any systems developed for these purposes can match not only the high throughput needs of the user, but also their sensitivity needs allowing assays to be performed earlier in the workflow with minimal amounts of pressure samples. And this faster time to results allows assessment of accurate and precise data earlier in the workflow, and as such, quicker decisions can be made on which lead candidates to promote. The Okta SF3 system is a unique combination of technological innovation complemented by robust engineering design, which helps make it the system of choice for both novice and experienced SPR users. Modern label-free analytical techniques allow kinetics interaction to be monitored with higher resolution in real time, which when combined with high throughput cap capabilities can significantly reduce the time to discovery, streamlining the selection of optimal drug candidates with the best chance for success downstream. The Okta SA3 system offers high sample throughput and highly accurate characterization of both small and large molecules from fragments up to IgM size as shown on the left-hand side. Combined, this allows users to determine accurate kinetic rate constants over a broad range of affinities, with the ability to measure dissociation rate constants for up to 12 hours, even the highest affinity interactions can be measured with confidence. Although the Okta SF3 is capable of multiple injection types, which allow the user to assess many different attributes for their samples, today's presentation will focus on these key three. The current industry standard, multicycle kinetics, MCK, one-step gradient injections, which eliminate the need for multiple analyte concentrations, reduces surface regeneration injections, and significantly reduces assay development time. And next step injections, which are gradient injections that allow for highly accurate competition assays. One of the biggest barriers to progress in science is this statement. That's the way we've always done it. But that doesn't mean it's the best way to do something. And even if you've always done it that way, I'll show you later how you can easily transfer assays across from a current SPR system onto the Okta SF3. As I've mentioned, the current industry standard method of kinetic assessment is multi-cycle kinetics, in which several concentrations of an analyte binding to a ligand are tested to ensure that the kinetic space is covered and accurate kinetic rate constants can be determined. Binding of an analyte to a ligand to form an analyte ligand complex is a second order binding process where the observed uh, response is dependent on the concentration of the two reactants, but here the concentration of the ligand can be viewed as a constant. In general, for kinetic assessments, in order for the association kinetic parameters to be accurate, sufficient curvature must be present in the observed response, as a key fact is kinetics is curvature. Assuming that affinity effects are minimized and the association phase does not run for too long so that weaker affinity interactions may occur, then the dissociation rate constant, concentration independent, does not require optimization. Traditional assay design and development can be very labor intensive when trying to determine an analyte concentration in a Godlock's like manner. As shown here, at high analyte concentrations, the association response is too rapid and the inaccurate kinetics will be determined, whereas the opposite is true for lower analyte concentrations where the binding response is too low and essentially linear, and therefore lacks sufficient information about kinetic events that a Goldilocks concentration which is just right, would give you. Therefore, multiple analyte concentrations 
must be included to ensure that the kinetic space of interaction is covered and accurate kinetic rate constant can be determined. As you can appreciate from what I've just said, determining an optimal and light concentration series for MCK using fixed concentrations requires significant development time and cost. And that's why the key fact is that curvature is kinetics. Without curvature, you can't determine accurate kinetics. Despite being the industry, industry standard for over three decades, we still see good, bad and ugly SPR data in a lot of research publications. Though obviously I've simulated the data here as an example, for a lot of users, it can often be a challenge to determine correct unlike concentration series, never mind a single unlike concentration that will be able to determine accurate and precise kinetics and affinity data. If traditional SPR presents barriers to users, then surely there's an easier way. And let me introduce you to one step injections, an injection model that is unique to the Octa SF3. Based on the restrictions I've just mentioned, there has always been a trade off between throughput and precision, but this can be remedied using one step injections. In simple terms, one step injections offer a unique single concentration injection profile that provides kinetics and affinity across a range of concentration values in a fraction of time. And with substantial savings in sample and reagent usage compared to standard multicycle kinetics. In this presentation, I'll demonstrate that reliable kinetics and affinity can be attained from significantly less data than is currently required, and the number of measurements necessary for accurate kinetics and affinity determination can really be reduced to a single measurement by using one step injections, increasing sample throughput and saving sample material. This removes multiple barriers for SPR including its use as a tool for large screens and allows rapid progression for assay development of potential therapeutics. But most importantly, can simplify SPR assay design and development, making accessible even to novice users. The main take home messages for one step are, one step eliminates the need for zero dilution of the analyte and requires only one sample injection to characterize the kinetics and affinity of an interaction. It saves time and sample, and it proves the analysis of unstable targets, which need to be tested quickly before their activity is lost. As with any technology that's new to people, it can be difficult to interpret what you are actually looking at. So here I'd like to compare one step sensograms to data sets that most people are used to seeing. As shown on the left, endpoint assays uh, use equilibrium data points to produce definitive data, while real time assays here SPR show binding progressing to reach equilibrium and from which we can determine kinetic rate constants, which can be used to calculate the affinity. Essentially, you are looking at the same data, just that SPR shows you how you got there and not just where you are, a feature that is critical in drug discovery and development. Unlike multi-cycle kinetics that require multiple analyte injections to determine kinetic rate constants, one step injections only require a single concentration of analyte to be injected to determine comparable association and dissociation rate constants and affinity values. As shown here, the nine analyte concentrations of multicycle kinetics can be achieved in a single analyte concentration using a one step injection. And as with multicycle kinetics, the kinetics and affinity can be determined. It's clear straight away that this represents a substantial time saving, but also, it must be considered that eight fewer regeneration steps are required during each sample. So more data can be extrapolated from a single ligand or unstable ligand can be investigated due to a shorter assay time frame. Here, all parameters have been kept constant between the multicycle kinetics and one step to show you how comparable sensograms would look when determining kinetics and affinity. It is important to clarify that the Octa SF3, as shown previously, can perform multiple injection types, and this includes multi-cycle kinetics as well as one-step injections, so users have access to both. Common question is, what exactly is one-step? How does it work, and how does it differ to multi-cycle kinetics? In very simple terms, one-step injections, as shown on the left, diffuse the analyte into buffer and create a continuous gradient of analyte concentration through the well under the principle of Taylor dispersion. There is no need to prepare full dilution series because one step injections actively test concentrations of three orders of magnitude during a single injection, which is sufficient to fully characterize kinetic and affinity interactions. But 
how does this compare to multicycle kinetic injections? If we imagine a multicycle kinetic assay with a top concentration of 1,000 nanomolar, we can see on the left-hand picture that the sensor chip surface will only ever experience a single concentration of 1,000 nanomolar. Whereas, if we envision a one-step gradient injection with the same top concentration of 1,000 nanomolar, we observe something very different. I like to use the example of the children's game Poo Sticks here. When you throw a stick into the river and whoever stick crosses the finish uh, line first wins. If you throw the stick close to the edge, the river tends to run slower, there's more debris than, uh, than in the center of the river. And if you throw it into the middle, where the river is faster, it flows ahead of the other sticks and you tend to win. One step can be thought of in a similar manner, where the unlike concentration at the edge of the injection experiences higher frictional forces than that in the middle and a concentration gradient forms. The lower concentration of analyte goes across the sensor chip surface first, and as the one-step injection continues, the higher analyte concentration will eventually go across the sensor chip, uh, chip surface too. Obviously, it's a bit more complicated than that, but if we look at a video of how it happens, you should be able to appreciate the event during a one-step injection. Initially, we see the analyte enter the buffer stream, and we see a diffusive front form with lower concentration in green diffusing first and approaching the sensor chip surface. As you can see on the sensorgram, this causes a low response increasing. Uh, stop. Start. Initially, we can see the analyte enter the buffer stream and we see a diffusive front form with lower concentration in green, diffusing first and approaching the sensor chip surface. As you can see on the sensorgram, this causes a low response increase, but as the one step injection continues, the concentration of the analyte close to the sensor chip surface increases and a subsequent increase in response is observed. Towards the end of the one step injection, the analyte concentration matches that of the original sample and the sensor chip experiences the highest concentration and as shown here, plateaus as would be expected. Importantly, the one-step injection contains a micro air bubble at the end that stops the analyte diffusing backwards into the buffer, ensuring the top concentration matches that prepared for the assay. This micro air bubble does not go across the sensor chip surface, but is removed to waste. As you can see from the data here, the same tenfold analyte concentration series performed using the MCK and one-step injections creates very different levels of curvature throughout the concentration range, and one-step injections provide more curvature and therefore contain more kinetic information. <clears throat> as I mentioned previously, curvature is kinetics, a property that can be exploited, as I'll discuss in the case studies. So, enough background information. Let's take a look at some actual data and how one step can offer an advantage over standard MCK assays. First, we'll look at some biological interactions using binding of HER2 and VEGF. The interaction between Herceptin and HER2 is exceptionally high affinity, and therefore a short and longer assay approach was taken with a long dissociation time of 3,600 seconds, although, as mentioned previously, you could take it out to 12 hours if desired. This dissociation constant is then applied to all analyte concentrations and the affinity determined. As you can see from the table in figure A, an affinity of 7.38 picomolar was determined using five concentration analyte series. In order to assess the flexibility of one step, each of these concentrations was then assessed using a one step injection as shown in figure B. It's worth stressing here that you don't have to perform multiple one step injections to determine connection affinity. Just that here, I wanted to show the flexibility in choosing the analyte concentration whilst still determining accurate and precise kinetics and affinity. As you can see from the table in the associated figure, taking the top MCK concentration of 25 nanomolar as shown in A and performing a one step injection returns an affinity value of 9.8 picomolar, which is exceptionally close to the value determined by multicycle kinetics. Interestingly, though, Using a decreased analyte concentration as shown in samples B, C, and D, 
return to almost an identical association kinetics and affinity, meaning that assay development can be massively simplified as lower concentrations return accurate kinetic and affinity values. The key factor here is that all concentrations show sufficient curvature, meaning that accurate association kinetics can be determined. Obviously, performing one-step injections offers a reduction in the amount of sample required, as no extra sample volume is required for creation of a dilution series. And here, simply, one step required 50% less sample on multi-cycle kinetics. One-step injections represent a significant time saving over multi-cycle kinetics too, for high, affin high affinity interactions. Here, the total multi-cycle kinetics time was five hours and four minutes for four short injections, with a 600 second dissociation time, and one long injection with 3,600 second dissociation time. And obviously, the buffer for the rest of the subtraction has to have an hour's dissociation as well. One-step injection, though, of the top hand light single concentration required two hours, 50 minutes versus the multiple time for the multicycle kinetics. This case study shows that even in assays where the expected KD is not known, a single one step injection can generate data very similar to a false MCK uh, concentration series. As another example of high affinity interactions, the VEGF binding antibody bevacizumab was assessed using multicycle kinetics and then the top and light concentration only assess using one step injections. As you can see for the one step injection, significant curvature is present throughout the injection in figure B, meaning that accurate kinetics can be determined. And this is shown in a table where the association constant is almost identical to that determined by multi cycle kinetics, as with HER2 and the septin on this, uh, the previous slide. This represents a time saving of over two hours and fewer regenerations of the ligand meaning more samples can be assessed. Importantly, one-step injections require 50% less sample for analysis. Clearly, high affinity interactions between antibodies and antigens work well using one-step injections, but what about other biological interactions? Interleukin-15, IL-15, is a member of the common gamma chain cytokines that promotes the differentiation and expansion of T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells, leading to an enhanced anti tumor response. Therefore, IL 15 is a promising candidate for anti, anti cancer therapy. Here, the binding of IL 15 to IL 2 receptor beta chain was assessed using MCK and one step as before, but an extra variable of the injection volume was investigated. IL 15 binding to IL 2 receptor beta chain returns an affinity of 63 nanomolar. An important user variable controlled in one-step injections is the percentage of the loop volume that can be injected. This ranges from 50 to 200% of the loop volume and is an important parameter in allowing both high and low affinity interactions to be determined. Here, we can see that when the top concentration of the MCK assessment is injected using a 50% loop volume, a near identical set of kinetics uh, and affinity parameters is determined. Increasing the loop volume to 75% increases the time the assay spends at steady state equilibrium at the top concentration, as you can see in the centigram, but again returns exceptionally sim similar parameters. With 100% loop volume, the same effect is, is, is observed. Therefore, we can show that when developing an assay, there would be no negative impact of initially using a larger loop volume and refining as appropriate. Ideally, a one-step injection should reach steady state at the end, but the longer an assay spends at equilibrium, the larger the risk of low affinity non-specific interactions occurring and interfering with the one-to-one -one model. From the data shown so far, we can see that assay development can be simplified using one-step injections due to the flexibility in unlike concentration choice and unlike exposure time to ligand. Obviously, flow rates play an important part in SPR assay development, and standard flow rates should be used for one-step as you would for multi-cycle kinetics. In addition to the time and sample saving we've already discussed, it's easy to see that one step injections offer a significant advantage in that they require far fewer regenerations of multicycle kinetics. Here, multicycle kinetics require six regeneration cycles, where one step would only require one, meaning unstable ligands can easily be assessed. In the final slides, looking at biological interactions using one step, I'll answer a question I often get asked but I've already developed all my assays on a different SPR system and I don't want to redevelop more. Okay, fine. Here I'll show a direct transfer of an assay independently developed and qualified on a different SPR system and transferred directly to the Okta SF3. 
with the only differences being that a different carboxymethyl dextran sense chip suitable for the Opta SF3 was used and one step injection was used instead of multicyclokinetics. The assay setup was a simple capture assay where anti human FC antibody was immobilized on the sense chip and the anti PD1 IgG4 antibody nivolumab was subsequently captured prior to PD1 being ejected as the analyte. In the case of multicyclokinetics, multiple analyte concentrations of PD1 were injected and the surface regenerated, but as discussed already, one step requires only one capture and regen for the top analyte concentration and for a buffer cycle for double reference subtraction. As shown here in the table in figure A, multicycle kinetics assessment using an analyte concentration series of 1.56 to 50 nanomolar returns an affinity value of 4.7 nanomolar. The same assay with using a one step injection using going into the top analyte concentration of 50 nanomolar returned a precise value of 4.1 nanomolar. As would be expected, the dissociation constants were near identical between the two assays, and this is also observed in the association rate constants too. This clearly shows that an assay developed on a different SPR system can be transferred across to the Octet SF3 with ease. Importantly, one step shows a huge reduction in the number of regenerations, uh, but is also significantly faster as the assay time for the data shown is approximately 90 minutes for the multicycle kinetics and 23 minutes for one step meaning you could assess four times as many samples using one step in the time frame it takes to do one multi-cycle kinetics. Obviously, this is exceptionally powerful if you're forming large library screens of potential therapeutics. Accuracy without precision is not a good place to be though in drug discovery. And ideally, you want to be on the left of this figure with high accuracy and high precision. So how does your Dr. SF3 data compare to other systems on the market? and independently determined affinity values. Here, we see that one-step injections of PD-1 binding to the nivolumab are precise when compared to other SPR systems on the market. And importantly, one-step shows excellent precision to the value published in the European Public Assessment Report for nivolumab, EPAR, of 3.1 nanomolar. <coughs> when taken together, all the data discussed for biologics so far in this presentation show that one step injections offer a significant advantage over standard MCK injections and are flexible enough to allow direct transfer of previously developed assays to the Octa SF3. Importantly, one step injections show high accuracy and precision to interaction values determined independently and by regulatory bodies. So far, all the data I've shown has been focused on biologics, but what about small molecules? They represent over 70% of newly approved drugs. And how did one step perform for them? If you think back to earlier in the presentation, I discussed the idea that for accurate kinetics, you need curvature, and that one step generates sufficient curvature and a number of analyte concentrations in order to derive accurate kinetics and affinity. Here, the well-known small molecule system of carbonic anhydrase 2 and frostamide was assessed. Carbonic anhydrase 2 and frostamide typically show literature affinity values between 500 to 1,000 nanomolar. And here, a tenfold dilution series of analyte from 100 micromolar down to 0.01 micromolar using both fixed concentration injections as found in both psychokinetics and one step injections was used. If we look at the fixed concentration injection results, we can see that at the highest concentration of 100 micromolar, the response rate is too rapid and accurate association kinetics cannot be determined. As we transition down through the analyte concentration series, we can see that only 10 and 1 micromolar would give values in the expected range. And if we look at the sense gram, we can see that both of these concentrations show good curvature. Unlike the lower concentrations of 0.1 and 0.01, they show a low response and little curvature, which results in inaccurate connection and affinity values. Performing the same assay, but just using one step injections, we see a very different story. Even at 100 micromolar, one step injections show good curvature thanks to the creation of a diffusion gradient between 0 to 100 micromolar, and as such, the determined connection ability value of 835 is very similar to those determined in literature. As the top analyte concentration decreased, we see that both 10 and 1 micromolar analyte concentrations concentrations show very good curvature 
and an excellent agreement in connecting infinity uh, literature values. It's worth noting here that the time spent at steady state equilibrium decreases as the analyte concentration decreases. This is expected as there is more analyte available, obviously, at 100 micromolar than 10 micromolar, 1 micromolar to saturate the ligand on the sensitive surface. If desired, the loop volume parameter discussed previously could be extended at lower concentrations to achieve a longer steady state equilibrium, although as shown, it's not strictly necessary. As the analyte decreases down further at 0.1 micromolar, we still get good kinetics and affinity data, unlike multicycle kinetics, but 0.01 micromolar, which shows very low response and poor curvature results in accurate connection and affinity determination. As with biologics, small molecules show the same requirement for the determination of accurate connection and affinity and also a much wider range of acceptable and light values than is reserved for multicycle kinetics. With this knowledge in hand, a simple assessment of carbonic androids 2 and frostamide was performed using multicycle kinetics, as shown in A, and the octa SF3 can be used to generate standard multicycle kinetic binding values of 671 nanomolar, and one step injection values generate a similar affinity of 623 nanomolar in a fraction of the time. Therefore, one step injections represent a five fold uh, time saving of, over multicycle kinetics for small molecules. They reduce the time cost and produce a complete kinetic profile from a single injection, which is obviously very important in kinetic assay screens uh, of small molecules. And you use fewer reagents, and due to the ability to assess more samples using a single sense strip, assay costs are significantly reduced too. After you have your, your small molecule of choice, traditionally narrowing down the pool of potential drug candidates involves several stages uh, of including direct binding assays, kinetic analysis, and competition formats. And as my last topic, I'd like to discuss a novel competition assay format called Next Step. It can be used for both biologics and small molecules on the Octa SF3. Unlike traditional surface competition assays that require the pre-mixing of two compounds, Next Step injections on the Octa SF3 SPR system offer walk-away inline mixing of compounds from a single analyte concentration, meaning multiple combinations of compounds can be easily tested and a competition, competition affinity determined from a single plate. Once compounds that bind to the target have been identified, competition assays are used to find site-selected binders directly by confirming the location of the binding site of a specific compound. And this is normally done by testing the compounds over a wide range of concentrations, which helps to confirm the binding and determine site specificity. Next step injections, a unique gradient injection method on the Octa SF3. And this method, like one step, involves a rapid dispersion injection where two sample components are dispersed and injected over a sensitive chip surface, as shown here in the figure on the left-hand side. This enables kinetic analysis in a single competition injection, making it a rapid and efficient method for screening. And the competition is clearly seen as a lack of binding in the presence of the competitor, providing clear and direct evidence of the binding site. Looking at the figure on the left-hand side, we can see at the beginning of the injection, the solution consists entire, almost entirely of compound B. However, as the injection progresses, it's, glad you, it's gradually replaced by compound A until the final stages of the injection, which consists primarily of compound A. Unlike traditional competition injections, the two samples and next step injections are mixed in line, and therefore compounds are never left mixed on an assay plate reducing the risk of compound to compound interferences, which can often complicate the analysis and lead to false positives or negatives. Traditional SPR uh, surface competition assays involve directly mixing fixed concentrations of compounds of interest and assessing their binding profiles over the duration of an assay, which may require days of assay time. And if the samples are mixed in advance, this negates the key advantages that SPR offers compared to other techniques. Therefore, where desired, Next step injections can be also performed with a constant concentration of the compound and shown in the right hand side by the black line. Unlike other SPR systems, the Octa SF3 system allows automated mixing of samples prior to the injection, meaning that samples do not have to be pooled in advance, allowing competitive and non-competitive binding to be easily assessed. <coughs> The power of next step injections lies in its simple assay setup and the ability to rapidly determine the effect of any competitor molecule here taken as compound B on a control molecule to, uh, to bind here taken as compound A. 
as an example, the highly refractive, highly refractive molecule sucrose, which does not bind to the sense chip, is used here. It's 10% as control molecule, it's compound A, and it's 3% competitive molecule as compound B in the next step assay format using a one-to-one -one ratio of A to B as shown in the table. In simple terms, cycle one acts as the reference for buffers protraction, and cycle two is the injection of the control molecule in the absence of the competitor. A compound B injection is always performed before compound A. So HVSEP is injected before the 10% sucrose as shown in the figure by the TO line for assay cycle two. This leads to an initially low response as the main constituent of the sample is HBSEP. But as the assay progresses, the concentration of the 10% sucrose increases until it's the main constituent of the sample. The binding properties of the competitor molecule are then assessed in cycle three. And as shown in the figure, the 3% sucrose in compound B is injected first. And we see a large increase in response that reduces over time as HBSEP becomes the main constituent. The final cycle, four, then assesses the binding of the control molecule in the presence of the competitor. And as shown in the figure, the presence of the 3% sucrose causes a higher response at the start of the next step injection that increases to a maximum as the 10% sucrose becomes the main constituent of the sample. Analysis of next step injections is simply performed by subtracting the data of the competitor binding in isolation, here cycle three, from the competitor uh, control molecule binding in the presence of the competitor, here cycle four. And as shown by the dashed line, as would be expected, subtraction of cycle three from cycle four generates a, a corrected data set that shows almost perfect overlay to cycle two, where the control molecule is tested. Where desired or required, the ratios of the control and competitor molecules can be changed over a range of 10 to 1 or 1 to 10 respectively, meaning molecules of differing affinities can be assessed in the same assay. Now, using a real world example, so phonamides are well characterized class of molecules, as I mentioned previously, they have been extensively studied using SPR. And the sulfonamides so frosamide and 4CVS have been shown to bind in the same pocket and carbonic anhydrase too, with an affinity values of approximately 500 and 1700 nanomolar respectively. Here, both molecules were paired to a concentration of 20 micromolar in PBST 3% DMSO, and their binding and competition to carbonic anhydrase assessed using next step injections as shown in the table. Firstly, Next step injection of furosemide shows binding to carbonic anhydrase 2 that is not inhibited by PBST during the assay cycle 2. In assay cycle 3, a clear difference in binding of 4CBS compared to, for, compared to furosemide can be observed. And when the next step injection is repeated with furosemide as compound A, a clear change in shape in the binding of the furosemide uh, curve can be observed when 4CBS is injected prior to furosemide as shown in orange compared to the teal of the original injection. As above for the sucrose example, in the data analysis step, the effect of 4CBS binding to frostamide can be assessed by subtracting assay cycle three from assay cycle four as shown in magenta. And as shown in the figure, there is a clear difference in frostamide binding in the presence, magenta, and absence, teal of 4CBS, which agrees well with published structures of carbonic anhydrase 2 in complex with the two molecules and the extensive data that shows furosemide exhibits, exhibits a higher affinity for carbonic anhydrase 2 than 4CBS. It is clear from the data shown that next step injections can be used to rapidly show whether molecules bind to a target in a competitive or non-competitive format. Sensitivity is important in small molecule screens, but the combination of sensitivity and user-friendly assay formats that optimize fragment screen campaigns compared to the comp, uh, competition, such as next step injections, make the Optech SF3 a powerful system in which drug discovery and booze SPR competition assays beyond sensitivity alone. The aim of today's presentation was to look at how one step injections and the injection types that are unique to the Optech SF3 can be used to help answer the questions of the future and enhance drug discovery and development. I've shown that one-step injections eliminate the need for serial dilutions of unlike 
and light like in the MCK and are capable of determining kinetics and affinity for biologics and small molecules that match those observed in published literature and by regulatory bodies. It's also important to know that assay development is streamlined and simplified and that even novice users can generate high quality data quickly. It's clear that one step injections can help users save not only time, but also their precious samples. So more can be done with less. Especially with regard to hard to purify targets and targets that are inherently stable. One step injections maximize sample throughput by optimizing the number of samples that can be on a single microplate. But it should be recognized that this extra space on the microplate can be used to assess multiple different parameters of interest and is not just limited to a sample number increase. As a visual summary, if we wanted to assess 96 samples using a six analyte concentration series using multi-cycle kinetics, you'd need this many plates. For the same 96 samples using a one-step injection, you'd need this number of plates, only a single plate. It's clear to see how the Octa SF3 can be used to accelerate your drug discovery and development. Thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to take any questions.